Why has there never been a woman on the moon? A fascinating new field of research emerged since nature is space exploration. Heresy. Space explorers, without exception, are males. Faith in one gender does not merit scientific progress. You will discover why there have never been any women on the moon in this video. Do you want to know why a woman has never been on the moon? Then stick around till the finish of this video. On July 20th, 1969, America's astronauts fulfilled a long-held dream. They arrived on the moon, 238,855 miles from Earth, clearing the door for humanity to exceed our cosmic neighbor in one of our most significant achievements. Today, I will investigate why there has never been a woman on the moon, when a woman will be able to walk on the moon, and whether there are any specific arguments to back it. Before we proceed, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. To receive instant notifications of new videos, click the bell button. Have you done so? Let us get this party started. Let us look at the facts about the moon to help us understand this video. The most widely accepted origin theory holds that the moon was formed 4.51 billion years ago. Not long after Earth, from the debris of a massive impact between the planet and a Mars-like body called Theia. Because of a tidal contact with the Earth, it then receded to a broader orbit. According to geophysical criteria, the Moon is a planetary mass object that became a differentiated rocky body, making it a satellite planet. There is no atmosphere, hydrosphere, or magnetic field. Its surface gravity is around one-sixth that of Earth, 0.1654 grams. The Moon is the sole natural satellite of the Earth. Its diameter is around one quarter that of the Earth, comparable to the width of Australia. The Moon is the solar system's fifth largest satellite. It is the largest and most massive satellite relative to its home planet and larger than any known dwarf planet. Its gravitational impact slowly lengthens Earth's day and is the principal cause of Earth's tides as it orbits Earth at an average distance of 384,400 kilometers, 238,900 miles, or nearly 30 times Earth's diameter. The sidereal duration of the Moon's orbit around Earth is 27.3 days. The amount of visible surface lighted by the Sun fluctuates from none to 100% during each synodic period of 29.5 days, resulting in lunar phases that serve as the basis for lunar calendar months. Who were the first individuals to set foot on the Moon? NASA was frantically planning for a lunar landing in a race against the erstwhile Soviet Union half a century ago. The non-stop campaign of testing and launches was also a race against time to fulfill murdered President John F. Kennedy's 1961 commitment to land a spacecraft on the Moon and return safely before the decade's end. On July 20th, 1969, America will rise to the occasion, but the endeavor would be marked by sacrifice and sorrow. Eight astronauts and candidates died in plane crashes or vehicle tests as did many other NASA ground crew and technicians, and dozens of test pilots died in the decades preceding Apollo. American astronauts Neil Armstrong, 1930 to 2012, and Edwin Buzz Aldrin, 1930, became the first people to arrive on the moon on July 20th, 1969. Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon six and a half hours later. Armstrong famously declared when he took his first step, that's one step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The Apollo 11 mission took place eight years after President John F. Kennedy declared a national aim to put a man on the moon by the end of the 1960s. The final crewed lunar mission, Apollo 17, took place in 1972. Why hasn't there ever been a woman on the moon? One, women did not have professions or participate in physically demanding activities during the Apollo 11 missions. NASA did not impede equality they worked hard on family farms and such. During Apollo's time, however, women were not permitted to run in the Boston Marathon. It was widely assumed that if women ran competitively like males, they would endanger their reproductive systems. Girls' physical sports had little sponsorship at the time. Girls were limited to dance, cheerleading, tennis, and other sports. Women were not allowed to join NASA's astronaut program until 1979. However, that does not mean that women were irrelevant to NASA. The spouses of the Apollo astronauts were vetted for their abilities to manage a family during stressful and unpredictable times. After the tragedy of their husbands' deaths, and with little pay or expectation for financial help from anyone, 
the women of the Apollo 1 mission rose to rally a mourning nation to continue with the goal that their husbands and themselves believed in. NASA could never thank them enough for their character and conviction, but they did their best. I feel that NASA has appreciated women throughout its existence. In terms of the value and validity of women and employment, it is ahead of other government institutions, including some of the better notable FFRDCs and civilian labs. So perhaps a better inquiry is, why did the armed forces civilian government labs and some industries take so long to catch up to NASA's embrace of all genders and races in building a culturally sensitive and varied workforce? Number two, women appear to be more vulnerable to the detrimental effects of space radiation. The Artemis program intends to return humans to the moon for the first time in more than 50 years. But this time, NASA has promised to put the first woman on the dusty lunar surface. Women appear to be more vulnerable to the detrimental effects of space radiation. Hence, they have different radiation boundary values than their male counterparts. Studies of radiation exposure for men and women show that women are more likely to get cancer. At the same time, other research indicates that space radiation is likely to harm female reproductive health. However, little to no study has been conducted on the various radiation readings for both sexes. However, as NASA prepares to send female astronauts to the moon no later than 2024, the space agency is exploring ways to reduce the effects of space radiation on its employees throughout the long journey. The Mare experiment, devised by the German Aerospace Center, includes the Helga and Zohar mannequins, DLR. The experiment will employ two identical female body models to study radiation exposure during the Artemis 1's mission flight, which might last up to six weeks. Artemis 1 will pave the way for Artemis 2, in which an Orion capsule carrying actual humans will fly to and from the moon without landing as early as 2024. Why land a woman on the moon? Retired NASA astronaut Peggy Whitston, a biochemist who became the first female non-military chief of NASA's astronaut office after breaking records as an astronaut, told Space.com that by highlighting women's work in Artemis, NASA is trying to help advertise and promote interest in the flight to the moon. I believe that traveling to the moon is the next logical step and that it is necessary for us to establish the infrastructure that will be required to travel further and go to Mars, Whitston stated. We know that the last time we sent men to the moon was in the 1960s, so we are righting a wrong from the past," Amy Shira Titel, a spaceflight historian and author, said on Space.com in an interview. I think it's to show diversity, she said, of NASA's deliberate inclusion of women in the upcoming lunar landing. To some, the forthcoming Artemis crewed lunar landing, which is presently scheduled for 2024, may appear to be a gimmick to demonstrate diversity in NASA's astronaut corps. While NASA's decision to include a woman as one of the two individuals to land on the moon next is deliberate, present and former NASA astronauts disagree that it is a stunt. This is not the first time social media trolls have accused NASA's rising diversity of being stunts. NASA astronauts Christina Koch and Jessica Meir performed the first all-female spacewalk at the International Space Station in 2019. The spacewalk was a planned battery upgrade and maintenance mission but it made headlines since a spacewalk with just women had never been done before. However, NASA did not purposely match the two together to make history. Mir and Koch were just two capable astronauts placed together due to the spacewalk rotation schedule, according to NASA officials at the time. This scheduling coincidence is merely the result of more female astronauts, so it is no surprise that one of the astronauts chosen to arrive on the moon aboard Artemis will be a woman. These ladies are well qualified. Furthermore, if there were to be a lunar mission, one or more of them would be chosen because they are competent, equally qualified, Whitson explained. One of the qualified and eligible astronauts to be the first woman to walk on the moon shares this sentiment. NASA astronaut Nicole Duke Mann, a test pilot and part of NASA's Artemis team, said Space.com in an interview. NASA has not said, our purpose is to land a woman on the moon. As part of the Artemis mission, we will return to the moon for long-term lunar operations. Moreover, I think the astronaut office is becoming increasingly diverse, including women. Female astronauts, it appears, have never been high on NASA's priority list. However, the space agency now appears keen to make amends for previous transgressions. NASA unveiled plans last week to place the first woman on the moon by 2024 and secured an additional $1.6 billion 
1.26 billion pounds to aid with the mission. We have come to the end of this video. I hope you like it. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more videos like it. Make sure you also click the bell symbol to be notified of new videos as soon as they are posted. Bye for now, until the next video.